Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Skyrim Mod Reviews. Uh, no, this is a Fallout 4 mod review. Are you sure? I'm pretty certain this had some Elder Scrolls armor in it. Uh, I'm sure. Just do it right this time. Okay, you heard the man. Welcome to Porterhouse Fallout 4 Mod Reviews. I'm Porterhouse. Why do we even pay you? Okay, well, you can kind of understand my uh, confusion, or at least you will when you see the first mod of the review. This is the TES-51 Power Armor Skyrim Inspired by Edible Grenade 12. Now, if you've been following my videos, and you should be following my videos by subscribing, then you know I've reviewed his uh, Submersible Power Armor, Bioshock Inspired, the big daddy armor that he made. Uh, it was in a, I reviewed it a few episodes back. Uh, he updated it uh, a couple times since I, I took a look at it. It's even better than it was before. It is a terrific mod. I couldn't wait to download it and update my, my big daddy armor. Now, moving on. Now, a little backstory for you. I think it was like maybe six months ago, I saw this excellent piece of art on a random social media site, and I can't even remember which social media site. Uh, I, I do remember the art very well because I was pretty impressed with it, and I thought, wow, this would make a terrific power armor mod for Fallout 4. Uh, unfortunately, it's not something I can make because I have the creativity and artistry of a toadstool. So the idea kind of faded away, and honestly, I had almost forgotten uh, about the uh, power armor idea. I had not forgotten about the art because it was that good, but I did forget about the idea, and then to my delighted surprise, BAM! Edible Grenade 12 released this on the Nexus. Now, he wasn't just willing to stop at the power armor. The mod author also included two weapons, a steel sword and a steel war hammer. Both of them look fantastic and look like they were pulled directly from Skyrim. Now, to find the armor, you have to go on a quest to the uh, deep dark heart of Boston to, a, to the Bethesda comic store. Now, if you're not sure where that is, just find your way to, uh, I believe it's called Wilson Automatoys HQ, and you'll be in the neighborhood. Be sure to bring a gun and an industrial size can of raid. Now, once inside the shop, be careful to look around and uh, find the three magazines. They're located both on the main floor and in the basement. Also, keep an eye out for the hammer and sword. Once you have everything together, grab your booty and the power armor while you're at it and head for the nearest power armor rack. Now, once you're there, you can customize your Skyrim-inspired power armor to your heart's content. Now, keep in mind that a couple of the mods will require some extra pieces that you normally don't see. Uh, you'll need some Yao Guai skins, three of them, I think, and two Brahmin skulls. Now, you can find Yao Guai near Rocky Narrows Park and in the Fairlane Hills Estates. Now, Brahmin skulls, I'm not sure. I actually had some on uh, in my inventory in my house. And I can't remember why I had them or where I got them, so uh, I'm sure if you look around you can find them. Uh, probably in places where you normally find bones, like near uh, Deathclaw dens and that kind of thing. Now anyway, once you have everything together, upgrade and paint the armor to your liking and begin your adventure. Now speaking of paint jobs, the paint jobs include some adaptation of uh, vanilla paint jobs, including the Brotherhood of Steel and the Hot Rodder. But there are also two Skyrim-themed paint jobs that I really, really liked. Uh, that includes the Nordic and Skyforged Steel. Now, both of them give the armor that extra Skyrim pizzazz. And for the review, I stuck with a Nordic one since I liked it so much. Now, also remember to pay attention when modding the armor. Edible Grenade 12 used some clever uh, Skyrim-inspired names for the mods, and you will not want to miss it. Now, later in this review, you'll get to see the armor in action, along with some other goodies from this review, and you'll get to see how it performs. Next up, we have Fallout 4 War Tags by Jeros. This is an absolutely stunning collection of power armor paint jobs by someone I'm pretty sure has had some experience with how uh, military equipment can be personalized. Now, I myself was a BMG operator in the United States Navy, and my helmet that I wore on my station was the old steel pot style, and it was decorated by an artistic friend with a flaming skull on the front and my U.S. Navy nickname on the back, and it's very cool calligraphy, so I'm at least a little familiar with the concept. Now, for more examples, uh, you need to look uh, at World War II bomber nose art, and that will give you a pretty good idea of uh, what's going on. 
Now what Jeros has done here so brilliantly is to bring that art style into the world of Fallout 4 for power armors. Now included in this mod are 16, that's right, 16 variations for each power armor with each armor having two torso and two helmet choices. Now the textured scratches and wear marks are drawn in by hand in such a way as to give it a very, very realistic looking depth. Now the mod author also went as far as to use separate textures for the left and right uh, arms and legs. So when you're applying these paint jobs, double check your work when you're done and make sure you put the right uh, texture on the right limb. Now unlike vanilla paint jobs, War Tags does not offer any special buffs and there are reasons for that. Please see the mod author's page for more details. Now there are also optional file downloads uh, that add paint jobs to the bat jet packs and change the Nora ta for Nora tag to for Nate. And thanks to Third Storm, uh, he also added painted armors to the gunner's leveled lists. Now everything is exceptionally well done to a brilliant degree. I cannot get over how realistic these paint jobs have turned out. Now for this review, I tooled up a bunch of power armors with uh, Jeros's paint job, but by no means is this a full representation of his work. Uh, so you need to download it and check it out for yourself. Now later in the action clips you'll get to see the war tagged armor in action and we're going to be moving on to the next mod. For the next mod I had to bring in my Fallout 4 version of Tish because this is a superb armor for the ladies. This is the Ares Tsunami CBBE by Disaster Juice. The armor is one that the mod author adapted from the Ares Android armors and comes in three pieces the Under Armor, the Hood, and the Armor itself. Now the Under Armor and the Armor are fully moddable, and the Under Armor in addition can be enhanced with Ballistic Weave. The textures are clean and realistic looking, and I was especially pleased with the texture on the Under Armor. The attractive patterns on the armor give it a stealthy and vaguely cyber reptilian impression, which I found very appealing. The body slide files worked well, even on my custom curvy body preset that I use with Tish. As a side note, Disaster Juice made this mod by request for a friend who is recovering from surgery, so that speaks to his fine character. I wish your friend well and a speedy recovery. Now I tried this armor under various combat conditions with Tish and found it very protective with the linings and the ballistic weaves installed. Tish still took damage, but not like she would even with most vanilla armors. The author did a stupendous job and I suggest you check out this mod. Before we move on to the next mod, I just want to tell you, you'll see more of this armor in action in the clips, and you'll get to see it in use by Tish. Our next feature is the Fusion Gun by Fallout Suite. This mod adds a totally new weapon to the game that just kicks ass. To obtain the gun, you can go to University Point and explore Cedric Hall, or you can go to the bomb storage room in Sentinel Site 1 out in the glowing sea. Now either way, you're going to have to kill an Institute Courser and take the weapon, a fusion pistol, when you first find it off of the body. Once obtained, you can mod the weapon, providing you have the materials and required perks, to suit your particular playstyle. You can leave it as a pistol, change it to an assault rifle, a shotgun, or a sniper rifle. The mod author did a terrific, excellent job giving us a lot of flexibility there. Now the appearance of the weapon is in fact very futuristic and is cleanly designed and looks great in both first and third person. Fully modded, the fusion gun can put some serious hurt on just about anything you care to shoot at. Now it has special ammo and it is a fusion cartridge and that can be crafted at the chemistry workstation with fusion cells, fusion cores, and nuclear materials. The mod author also states on his page that the ammo can be purchased from vendors if you're high enough level. Now I'm not entirely sure, but the sound the gun makes when being drawn and fired sounds custom to me, but then again I use mostly ballistic weapons so I'm not entirely sure, but it did sound custom to me and it does sound pretty neat. Now in the review so far you may have seen glimpses of the fusion gun in action and you will see more a little bit later. The final mod of the review is the Cross Tactical Swimsuit by Nero. Now I'm sure you know the author's name. He is the brilliant mod artist that brought us the Cross Jetpack and the Cross Plasrail. This time around he has given us a fantastic tactical bikini swimsuit. I'm not going to lie, when I first saw this I immediately thought of Honey Ryder who was the main Bond girl in the James Bond movie Dr. No. Uh, she was played by Ursula Andress. I love James Bond movies, so when a chance came along to add that Bondsian feel to my game, I immediately jumped at it. 
to get the uh, the swimsuit, you can either craft it at the chem lab, or if you have Cross Cybernetics installed, you can download the other version and then you can make it in the cyber lab. You need to understand that this is just the basic outfit, and what the mod author has done is you can now take it to the armor workbench and mod it literally dozens of different ways. You can remove parts, you can add parts, change glove lengths, or remove the gloves entirely all on an individual basis. You can enable a tack strap that adds coverage to the right cup of the bikini and more armor to the outfit overall. You can change legging lengths or remove them, and most importantly, you can change the colors and add these really cool decals. Now, I tooled up four sets uh, of the armor in different colors and, con and configurations that I liked and set up all of my lady followers with them, and it looks totally terrific. So, after a hard day of traveling and fighting, we all went down to the creek to play in the water, and my character wore his most stylish beach attire for the occasion. Afterwards, we decided to do some hunting and eh, forego the power armor, and also to test out the lady's new tactical swimsuit. The armor protected my followers well, fantastic. It was great, even though they really, really took a beating. So in short, the cross tactical swimsuit is as protective as it is stylish and sexy. Now we come to my favorite part of the review, where I show you some clips of the mods in use, and afterwards I will give you my final thoughts and criticisms, if any, on the mods we just looked at, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the action. We'll be back in a bit. There he is. Yep. Oh, shit! Down bar, sit. Oh crap! <laughs> Thanks, girls. <laughs> Damn your crap myself.
Now you can see why the action clips is my favorite part of the review. I get to try out all the mods and just generally go out and play the game and have some fun. Now all the mods performed as advertised and starting at the top, the TES-51 Power Armor by Edible Grenade 12 not only conjures images of traversing East March and Skyrim, it protected my character's skin while he traversed the radioactive and dangerous ruins of Boston. Now, the only criticism I can even begin to dredge up is actually more of a suggestion Deathclaw helmet. Just think about it. Next up, we looked at Fallout 4 War Tags by Jeros, which makes vanilla armor look like it has been through hell and worn by men with violence on their minds and war in their hearts. It is without a, a doubt the best paint job for power armor I have ever seen. Now, one of the things I forgot to mention earlier is that the mod author recommends the Black Titanium Power Armor Frame mod by Terminal Gear. It changes the power armor frame to a nicely shaded black frame that will make your power armor look even better. Now, I have no critiques whatsoever. Just be mindful of what paints you're applying to what limbs uh, when you're painting the armor so you don't wind up with backwards text. Uh, we also looked at Aries Tsunami CBBE by Disaster Juice. This is a superbly done armor for the ladies. I loved everything about it. I did notice some minor clipping in certain positions, but that happens with any armor that uses body slide files. The clipping was almost unnoticeable, and frankly, I only spotted it because I was editing still shots. Now, as I said before, the textures are awesome, and the armor is very protective. Uh, Fusion Gun by Fallout Suite was a sweet, sweet uh, weapons mod. It is beautifully made, and the uh, gun can deal serious damage when it's tricked out with mods. Now, as I said earlier, the mod author gives you lots of great options for how you want it configured. I have no nitpicks for this mod at all. It is a fun, fun mod. Last but not least, we looked at Tactical Swimsuits by Nero. I really, really like this mod. The mod author did such a great job of making all the pieces look good and allowing you to mix and match almost indefinitely is, de is a bonus. Uh, the armor was surprisingly resilient and kept my lady followers safe and sound. There are so many combinations of this armor that I did not touch on. You're just going to have to download it and look for yourself. Now all the mods are examples of how to do mods of each type and I hope uh, to, to see more from all the uh, mod authors in the future. Be sure to endorse the mods if you liked them as much as I did, and maybe drop by uh, the, the mod author's webpage and leave them a note via Nexus Mail, and let them know how much you enjoyed the mod. And if they have a mechanism in place for donating cash, please do so. Modding is a lot of work, and these folks put their hearts and minds into it. Now, speaking of minds, I would not mind at all if you hit that like button if you enjoyed my review, and please remember to subscribe if you have not already done so. And I will see you all in the next mod review.